Hello everyone and welcome to today's tutorial on TensorFlow Explained at Simply Learn. Do you know friends that the latest insights from LinkedIn reveal a booming job market in the United States with machine learning engineers leading the pack as a fastest growing role, showcasing an impressive 344% increase in job postings since 2015. This trend underscores a surging demand for machine learning expertise across various sectors. Complementing these findings, the World Economic Forum's Future of Job Reports projects a dynamic global job market with a churn rate of 23% by 2027. And it's expected that 69 million new jobs will be created while 83 million may be phased out. So keeping in this mind, today we are going to learn about TensorFlow. So you'll be wondering what exactly is TensorFlow? Actually, TensorFlow is an open source deep learning framework developed by Google Brains team. In this video, we will explore how to get started with TensorFlow, leveraging its capabilities similar to NumPy for numerical computations. We will cover generating random tensors, manipulating tensor dimensions, performing various tensor operations. You will learn to change data types, remove single dimensions, and apply one hot encoding. So without further ado, let's get started. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like, and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. Now, before we move on, just a quick info, guys. You can advance your data science career with this postgraduate program in data science in collaboration with Caltech CTME and IBM. This program teaches you skills and tools including Python, ML, Tableau, Generative AI, ChatGPT, and many more. So hurry up now and join the course. The course link is mentioned in the description box. So let's get started. So guys, let's start with TensorFlow. As you all know that TensorFlow is an open source machine learning framework which is developed by Google Brains team. It's designed for building and deploying machine learning models with a focus on deep learning applications. TensorFlow offers a comprehensive ecosystem of tools, libraries, and community resources that make it easier to build, train, and deploy machine learning models across different platforms, from desktops to mobile devices and to the cloud. Now let's get started with the TensorFlow. To get started with the TensorFlow, let's first understand some of the features of TensorFlow. First of all, TensorFlow is a versatile and flexible library of Python. It supports wide array of algorithm and it is adaptable to variety of tasks. The next one is it has an ecosystem and tools. TensorFlow provides a rich ecosystem of tools that help researchers and developers to deploy ML models more effectively. And finally, it has a very good community and support. Now to get started with TensorFlow, you first need to install it. And this can be easily done using pip. You can use the Python package installer. You can install TensorFlow using the following command. But before that, let me give you a highlight what we are going to do. So guys, we are going to install TensorFlow. Then we will move with TensorFlow with NumPy. And then we are going to generate the random tensors. Let us try to complete this task. So for the same, we are going to use Google Colab. So guys, as you can see all over here, that we have opened the Google Colab. So this is a cloud-based IDE and it's a very wonderful IDE. I will also recommend you to use the same. Now let's get started. So first, what we are going to do, we are going to install the TensorFlow. So our first task is installing TensorFlow. So for the same, I have used pip install TensorFlow. Now, let us try to run this, but before that, you have to connect it. So, let it get connected. So, as you can see, it has been connected to Python 3 Google Compute Engine. Now, let us try to run this. So, guys, as you can see all over here, that our TensorFlow is installed and we are installing it using the pip. Now, let us move to the next part. The next step is importing TensorFlow as TF. So let us run this. Okay, now we have imported the TensorFlow. Let us move to the next step. Now in the next step, we are going to check the version of TensorFlow. So for the same, 
I am printing tf dot version. Now let us try to run this. So you can see our version of TensorFlow is 2.15. Now we are going to use TensorFlow with NumPy. TensorFlow can be used similarly to NumPy for numerical computations. In fact, many TensorFlow operations mirror those found in NumPy, making it easy for those familiar with NumPy to transition to TensorFlow. Now here is an example of creating a tensor and performing some arithmetic operations. So you can see all over here, I have created a tensor with a equals to tf dot constant and parenthesis and inside that there is a square bracket one, two, and three. Similarly, I've created a tensor B. Now, we are going to perform an element-wise addition. So for the same, I have taken the variable C all over here, and I am adding tf dot add A and B. Now, what is this tf, guys? So remember this, we are importing TensorFlow as tf. So for the same, we are using it. Now, we are using a keyword called constant all over here for creating a tensor. Now, in order to perform the addition, I'm using the add keyword and I'm adding these tensors A and B. Now similarly for multiplication, I'm using tf.multiply and A and B. Now let us try to run this. So, now guys, as you can see all over here, that when I'm adding it, it is printing tf.tensor 579 and it's telling its shape is three and it is of data type integer. Now similarly, if I want to check for D, so you can see all over here, it is going to print 4, 10, and 80 with of shape 3 and data type as integer of 32 bits. So we have completed this part. Now let us move to the next part. Now guys, in the next step, we are going to generate the random tensors. Generating random numbers is a common task in machine learning and TensorFlow provides various functions to create random tensors. For instance, you can generate a tensor of random values from normal distribution or a uniform distribution. So for example, I have distributed a random tensor from a normal distribution. So I have declared a variable random normal and tf.random and I'm using tf.random.normal and three and three were the values where mean equals to 0, 0.0 and standard deviation I have put equals to 1.0. Now, let us try to run this. So, now let us try to print it, okay. Print. So you can see all over here, the tensor we are generating from the normal distribution is something like this. And similarly, if I want to generate a random tensor for a uniform distribution, okay with minimum value equals to zero and maximum value equals to 10, okay? So these are the parameters that you have to remember. For normal distribution, it's mean and standard deviation. And for uniform distribution, you have minimum value and the maximum value. Let's copy this. Now you can see we have randomly generated tensor from the uniform distribution. The shape of three and three and data type is float. Now, let us move to the next part. We are going to add a dimension to the tensor. In many scenarios, you might need to change the shape of your tensor by adding new dimension. And this can be easily done using the tf.expand dims command. Now, suppose this is the code. So guys, you can see all over here, this is our original tensor and it is declared with a variable tensor equal to tf.constant. And we are adding a new dimension, which is expanded tensor equals to tf.expand dims tensor zero. Now we have added a new dimension all over here. So this is going to add a new dimension at a specified index and it is going to transform a 1D tensor into a 2D tensor. Let us see. So we are going to print the expanded tensor. So you can see guys, I have printed the expanded tensor all over here. Now, let us move to the next part that is tensor operation. TensorFlow provides a wide range of tensor operations such as reshaping, slicing and mathematical operations. So here are a few examples. So guys, as you can see all over here, so I have declared a variable called tensor all over here 
and then I'm reshaping a tensor, okay, with the given tensor that we have created and I have also added its shape 3 and 1. Now we are slicing the tensor, so tf dot slice tensor indexing 0 to 2. And we are also doing the mathematical operation all over here, which is a sum tensor, and we are reducing the sum to tensor. Now, now let us try to run this code and see what is our output. So you can see all over here that this is our original tensor with the shape 3. And reshape tensor is something like this. So it has a shape of 3 and 1. Okay. Now the slice tensor, you can see all over here that it is 1 and 2 and with the shape of 2. And sum of the tensor is 6, the shape is null. Now let us move to the next part. That is changing the data type of a tensor. You can change the data type of a tensor using tf.cast. This is useful when you need to ensure that tensors have the correct type for certain operations. So let us try to do this. So you can see all over here guys that I'm creating a tensor of integers, okay? Then I'm changing its data type to float. So I'm using the word called cast, okay? Now, if I try to run this, okay? So print, So you can see all over here that it is coming 1 dot, 2 dot, 3 dot, and it has a shape of 3. Similarly, we are going to remove all the single dimensions. To remove all single dimensions from a tensor, you can use tf dot squeeze, and this is particularly useful when you have tensors with unnecessary dimensions. Let me show you one. So guys, as you can see all over here, that I have created a tensor with a single dimension, okay? Now I'm removing all the single dimensions all over here. Now this is a squeeze tensor. So you can see now we have one, two, and three, and we have shape three and null. So this is how we have removed all the single dimensions. Now moving ahead, we are going to move on one hot encoding. Now guys, you'll be wondering what is one hot encoding? Basically, one-hot encoding is a technique that is used to convert categorical values into binary vector representation. TensorFlow provides tf1.hot to perform this encoding. So here is a sample code for the same. Now you can see all over here that we have performed the one-hot encoding into the categories. Now we can see all over here that one hot encoded equals to tf dot one hot and there's categories and depth equals to three. Now, and this basically has completed our objective of performing the one hot encoding on the categories. So this was our tensor basically. And here we have used the tf dot one hot for performing the one hot encoding on this given tensor with depth equals to three. So guys, that was all for today's video. I hope so. You would have enjoyed our today's video on TensorFlow. Now, before we move on, if you like this kind of content guys, then do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon to get the further updates. Staying ahead in your career requires continuous learning and upskilling. Whether you're a student aiming to learn today's top skills or a working professional looking to advance your career, we've got you covered. Explore our impressive catalog of certification programs in cutting edge domains, including data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, or digital marketing. Designed in collaboration with leading universities and top corporations, and delivered by industry experts. Choose any of our programs and set yourself on the path to career success. Click the link in the description to know more. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.